Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna to talk about cardio. Cardio may be during cuts, but more importantly, cardio, will it kill your gains? Should you do cardio in a bulk? And is there maybe such thing as too much cardio or is it affecting me negatively? If you guys wanna dive into this thing, do me a favor, give this thing a thumbs up. It helps me a lot. Subscribe, new videos Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. New podcast, 50% Facts, where we're tackling the hardest questions and getting the best answers from the world's leading experts on fitness, nutrition, business, life. So be sure to check out 50% Facts on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you wanna go. And I'm on Twitch every single night, twitch.tv slash Silent Mike with two Ks. Let's hop in. So a common, common question, when should I do cardio? Why should I do cardio? And will it affect my lifts and what I'm getting into? And I imagine the majority of you guys are either into some kind of strength sport, whether you compete in powerlifting or not, you're just interested in getting stronger and maybe the squat, the bench press and deadlift. I also imagine that the majority of you guys wanna look good, but not be um, weak, not be skinny and small. No one wants to be skinny fat. Everyone wants to have some muscle, but still have some definition. If your goals are primarily strength, um, it might be a little bit different than if your goals are primarily aesthetics or if you're stepping on stage for bodybuilding. So we're gonna kind of eliminate competitive bodybuilding. Um, we're gonna talk about general strength, powerlifting, maybe even weightlifting, strongman, um, and then also what you guys need to know for your cardio bulk. Um, a lot of people bash Westside Barbell and Louis Simmons, who was a very popular coach, uh, strength and conditioning coach, powerlifting coach in the geared powerlifting age. Uh, he still has a ton of knowledge and a ton of things we can take from him. Although not everything I think he says applies to the raw lifter or the lifter now in 2019, I do think there's a lot of knowledge base that he has um, that can be used and shouldn't be ignored. And one of the biggest things he preaches about is GPP, general physical preparedness, which basically means that there's a base level of fitness, how in shape you are, for your sport. And in shape, again, depends on the specificity of your sport, but we're talking about base. Can you breathe a little bit? Are you generally strong, mobile, et cetera? And that base, the GPP, depends on your sport. Um, in my opinion, powerlifting might be one of the lowest GPP sports in the world. Where counter to that, soccer or basketball might be one of the highest GPP sports, right? You have to not only be fast, you have to have good endurance, you have to have good agility, you have to have a good vertical jump, you have to be resilient, you have to um, be strong enough to handle some contact in those sports. Obviously, football is way up there as well. There's a bunch of contact, a little bit of sprinting, um, some endurance, a lot of strength, and a lot of agility and mobility. Um, but when we're talking about strength athletes getting stronger, getting better, at powerlifting, we still need to be able to recover from our sets, from our workload, and some cardio will help that. Now, how much is too much and how much will be detrimental to you or your progress kind of depends on the individual, their lifestyle, and somewhat of their genetics and how uh, far into the sport they are. The more advanced you get, you're probably gonna be more specific into the sport, um, but as a beginner, being able to you know, run a mile or ride a bike for 20 minutes and not get out of breath is going to be huge. It will help also as you get further down the road, but your loads and you'll be so specific in your training that you'll be prepared for that. I think for general health, cardio is gonna be amazing no matter what. Obviously, it's training of your heart, your bloods, your, your lungs, and that's going to help live longer. And obviously, I think it has a lot of mental and physical benefits. For me, mentally, riding my bike, commuting to work, commuting to the gym, commuting around town, has helped me in a lot of ways um, think more clearly and obviously shed some fat. I'm in a pretty decent place right now I'm not bulking, I'm not cutting, um, but I'm paying attention to my nutrition, I'm lifting pretty dang hard, and adding in that neat, that little bit of cardio, the little bit of extra energy a day has allowed me to become leaner while still maintaining, if not gaining, some of my strength back uh, in both powerlifting and weightlifting. When you're bulking, obviously the cardio won't be as important um, because we're doing cardio while we're cutting, trying to get leaner to burn more energy so we can eat a little bit more while still being in a calorie deficit. Um, but while you're bulking, keeping in some kind of cardio so then uh, you can recover. Sometimes a light walk, a light bike does a lot for circulation, again, mentally and physically, and allows you to recover from that training and allows you to handle more volume in training. Although the lifting, you know, 10 sets of two on deadlift and going for a 20 minute bike ride are very different energy systems and very different skills, um, they can complement each other. If you can't ride a bicycle or go for a walk for half an hour and you're trying to do you know, 10 sets of two at 
80% on your deadlift, it's going to be much more difficult than if you have the work capacity, the general endurance, muscular endurance to handle that bike ride or go up some stairs, et cetera, et cetera. How much is too much? Too much is probably just when you start to feel too fatigued and can't accomplish your lifting. Now that's when we have to figure out our priorities. If we just want to be healthy, have fun and lift some heavy weights, I'm not going to tell you to ever stop cardio or playing sports, but if your goal is purely to get stronger, then you might have to dial back. You might not be able to play in that you know, team soccer league on Tuesdays and the weekend warrior basketball league on Saturdays. Some of that may just leave you too fatigued as um, calories, sleep, um, and how much we can recover. All of that is just different stimulus and it all just takes different uh, energy to recover from it. And so we only have one system that we're basically uh, using to recover. It's not like we have a cardio energy system what well, we do, but you guys are getting the analogy here. I don't want to get too much in detail. It's not like we have a, a recovery for endurance and a recovery for musculature. All of it is stimulus and all of it can fatigue us. So if you're too fatigued from a basketball game, it should be pretty obvious that your deadlifts aren't going to go as well. But if we have a nice layer of cardio throughout our week, three to maybe even five times a week, kind of lower intensity stuff, keeping your heart rate good while still being able to accomplish all the sets and reps you want to do in training, tracking our calories, you should be all set. I do suggest you do some kind of uh, conditioning. Um, what matters, or what type, that's gonna have to be you and figuring it out. I can't coach all of you individually with your goals and your history, but I prefer something kind of low intensity, something good where I can kind of think, I can kind of zone out, um, and it doesn't affect my body. If I was doing sprints, shuttle sprints or sled sprints all the time, my legs would probably be very fatigued from all the squatting and weightlifting I'm doing. We're going for a bike ride is the perfect mix for me. I get to be outdoors, get a little sunshine, and still get that cardio in, get a little sweat. Hopefully that helps you guys figure out if cardio is being detrimental, if it's messing up your gains. Hopefully you liked the video. Give this thing a thumbs up. Sound the mic. I'm out of here. Catch you Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Thanks, y'all.